hi guys welcome back or to my channel i am back i'm filming i am going to be consistent now as you could see from the last video i haven't been here for another month but i do have reason for that i've been filming a lot and getting a lot of videos um created and i've been editing and now i have some videos that i can consistently upload so i don't get as overwhelmed so that is what i've been doing for the past month so i have been technically being active you just haven't seen me i'm here i'm ready to film and start posting once a week again and with everything being said, we are going to talk all about this leopard gecko that is sitting on my head today. This is Maisie, also known as Mango or Margo for a period of time. She has a lot of names that all start with M, but at this point she is Maisie. But that is what we're going to refer her to, but she has had different names in the past if you are confused. I want to talk all about her story today. She is one of the biggest rescues I have worked with and um, just one of the sweetest girls. And she has had a completely... Um, 180 recovery and I just really wanted to talk about her since I've had her for six or eight months probably about now. So, with everything being said we're gonna jump into the video and start talking about her story. So one of my pet friends in the pet community took in two leopard geckos and she was only able to foster one so she was looking for someone that was willing to foster her and um, I was willing to take her. She came out and reached out to me because she knew we lived in the same state. She knew that I rescued and fostered reptiles anyway, so she came to me and asked me about it and kind of got, I caught the brief story, which was that she had a very obese leopard gecko she took in and a extremely malnourished skinny leopard gecko that I thought potentially either had parasites or stick tail syndrome, which are both very concerning. Um, she was deciding which leopard gecko she wanted to foster and I just told her like, hey, I have, you know, a lot of experience in skinny leopard geckos and male nourished leopard geckos, but um, I'd also be completely fine with the overweight one. I did not really care. It was completely up to her. At the end, decided that she wanted me to take her because she was just very concerned about her weight and just everything going on. I'll try to find the pictures. She looked so bad. When I saw her, I was like, this gecko's not living another like five days. Like I was like, she's not gonna make it. I instantly thought, okay, an obese leopard gecko and then a leopard gecko who has nubby toes because she lost all of the tips of her toes. And she did have stuff shed at the time, but I was like, maybe she got them bitten off. I was assuming they were maybe cohabbed and only one was getting food. But um, I believe that was not the case. Actually, they were housed separately. I'm just not sure what was running through the person's brain. That owned them, that was like, hey, I'm just gonna feed one of my geckos and just leave the other. It was like a Cinderella situation, I have no clue. Continuing the story. So when I got her in, I was very concerned and usually I wait three to, roughly like three to five days, depending on the species and before I offer food, sometimes it's less than that, depending on, again, the animal. But I offered her food immediately when I got home. I was so concerned she was going to die from starvation. She had so many kinks in her because she lost so much weight. I could completely see her ribs and spinal bone. She was literally had nothing to her. She was skin and bones. So when I offered her food, she took immediately, which was so... Just, it was like the best moment to me in the world because I was so scared that she wasn't going to eat the food. And um, the person that rescued them. I'm not sure if she wants me to mention her name, so I'm going to leave her out, but she said she offered food um, before that she brought her to me. So she said she did eat, which was very, very exciting because that was a telltale sign that she most likely didn't have parasites. Um, but if she did, she wouldn't be gaining weight. So what I did is I usually feed an adult leopard gecko every three to five days, but her I was feeding every other day, but I was only feeding a few bugs just for the first few weeks because I needed to get her weight up. And in the first two weeks, I believe she gained about 10 or 12 grams. And at that point, I slowly moved her back to like three or four days because obviously she could get overweight quite quickly. So she was, oh my gosh, what was she? I feel like I've mentioned it before. She was like 30 or 40 grams when I got her, maybe in the late 20s, which is insane for an adult ever gecko. She was supposedly two or three years old. But she jumped up to about 50 in the first week, which was very exciting. I believe she was 50 or 40, whatever she was, she gained about 10 or 12 grams from that. And then um, at that point, she was consistently gaining a couple grams a week, up for about two months until she reached about 60 grams. And that was like the most exciting milestone. Um, she, I have videos of her. She had so much personality. She was so spunky. She was 
just such an insane fighter and it's so cool to see animals that are like this small you would just think couldn't bounce back very easily or they're just so malnourished she doesn't even look like the same gecko like i saw the photos again a while ago and i was like what what gecko was that that i rescued and i just forget it's her because she has such like a full face now she's so bright in color um i've been asked about her morph i believe she's either a carrot tail baldy or some type of a tangerine or something along those lines but I cannot confirm because we have no clue her genetics or where she's from so I will never be able to confirm but all I know is I love her coloring and it's super cool. So um, I had her in a 10 gallon for about the first two months monitoring her and then she moved into a 20 long and then she eventually once I just y'all know what happens every time I film um, my card was full. Continuing on um, then she moved into a 24 I believe it's about 24 gallons of space i could be wrong don't quote me completely on that i'd have to check my dimensions again um gallon tank and that is the smallest tank in my reptile build but reasoning for that is because one i wanted to monitor her can like still and also she can't climb so um i wanted to have a little bit you know just a smaller cage just to ensure that she was okay and she still has plenty of space that's bigger than the um like average requirement of a leopard gecko enclosure here she is she is doing so well um, as you can see, she has gained so much weight and she is just such a healthy gecko now um, compared to what she used to look like for quite a few months. Just got some loose substrate and I'm actually considering making her bioactive um, just because she can't climb so I want to enrich her physically as much as I can. So she has a lot of plants, she has four hides and multiple cork areas that she can you know go in still. So she has a lot of places she can hide under and go in and she can also dig now. Um, so I'm trying to enrich her in as many ways as possible since she can't climb. I do have a few small things she can climb on, a couple pieces of cork and things like that but um, I try to keep that to kind of a minimum because I just get so worried that she'll just plop over or get injured or get hit her spine or head in the wrong place. So. Um, that's probably just me over wearing, but um, I just do it for the safety of her. But she still has things she can climb on. It's not like she's not allowed to or can't. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys next time. And I will um, hopefully see you next week, as long as I can get my videos edited. But um, I love you so much. Stay awesome. Bye, guys.